So this time we are on the TTI TCB 550N, which is the new version. I don't have a service manual for this and it's totally different to the non-N version. But what I've determined is that the VCO test point is just there. And if I zoom out we'll just see what we've got on the meter. I'm on channel 20 on the UK band so you of course check between channel 1 and channel 40 on whatever bands you're using. If I go into transmit we've also got 2.7 so that looks to me like we've got the VCO test point. I'll just zoom in on the test point it was just a bit of print that looked different and in the right area. So I've been showing you a test point there and the VCO coil is clearly the one in the can there. It's a brand new radio so we're not going to touch it. The chassis, you'll notice I've got my meter test prod onto the chassis now I noticed on the TTI 550 it was a floating chassis and I had to put the negative onto a suitable point of the radio which was at, uh, at zero potential. But it's not a floating chassis on this and the chassis is at zero. So if you've got a 6 volt Volkswagen Beetle with positive ground that's something to worry about. So I'll take that clip off. There are very few adjustments and so we're going to do this all in one video because we can. So, transmit. First of all I'm going to check the frequency. I'm on channel 20 of UK band. It should be 27 decimal 79125 and it's 2779116. Now the trimmer capacitor for the reference crystal, the 10.24 reference crystal trimmer capacitor is just down there to the left so I'm just going to adjust that and that was labelled as CT301 setting the 10.24 CT301 and now I'm going to look at transmit power see what we're doing out of the box um, 3 watts there's no adjustments for the transmitter at all so what we're going to do there isn't the um, automatic power control adjustment which is just there and it is RV901 I think that says just going to a different range on the test set so with RV801 we've been able to get the transmitted power to about 3.9 something watts so that's as, as near as it should be so next we better look at the deviation on transmit. Using my small oscillator I hold to the microphone. Oh, that seems to be very, very low. I've only got one kilohertz. one and a half with the maximum whistle. Right, well the deviation on these radios, the FM deviation is the control there, I think it's 401. So we'll just adjust that.
So the deviation adjustment there has brought the deviation between 2.2 and 2.5, which is how we want it. So that was very low, which is uh, would have been quite quiet on the air um, in the way that was set up. So that's all there is to the transmitter. We've done the frequency, we've done the power, we've done the deviation. Uh, for people using AM, there is an adjustment for the AM modulation, and that's just behind the modulation transformer there. Um, right, we'll move on to the receiver. The moment you're hearing three microvolts. One microvolt. 0.3 of a microvolt. Not point one five. Very, very receive. Very good receive that on sensitivity, and that actually works better than the previous version of this radio. So the only thing we've really got to check is how the squelch works. Now this has got one of those auto squelch things. Whether or not it's real auto or whether it's preset squelch is another matter. So what we're going to do is switch the signal generator off, set the the um, auto squelch on, switch the signal generator back on and see when it comes in. The answer is 3 microvolts. I haven't got a pro um, 3 microvolts. Yeah, 3 microvolts. I haven't got a problem with that at all. Now we'll do the same again, switch the signal generator off, switch the squelch to manual, advance it to threshold and see when the signal generator comes in. And the answer is one microvolt. That's excellent. Now what we'll do is we'll advance the squash control manually to full and see how big a signal is required to open the squash. And that's 100 microvolts, which is S9 equivalent. That works absolutely fine, just how we would expect it to do. Had we needed to adjust any of that, the RV, I think it's 181, which is just there, is the squelch adjustment. And the another little adjustment down here, don't know whether we can just see that, is for the auto squelch. Manual squelch, the auto squelch. But as I say, this is a brand new radio. And apart from the deviation, it's set up um, pretty reasonably. Normally we'd do the detector. The FM detector is going to be there, and it's been wax-filled. And I've got no reason to suspect that it's out of alignment in any way. That's really quite a good policy, because you, you put them in a the car and they rattle down the road, and you end up with the... Um, with that going so much out of adjustment and you get distorted voices on receive. So that's a really good idea and um, I can't really fault it. So a very sensitive receiver and the squelch set up properly and that's all there is I can say about the TTI 550N. So we'll do an on the air test in due course and thank you for watching.